Doctrine, and I feel something. Let's first of all look at, uh, 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 just consider maybe three other areas where John said you could tell whether or not that the, the teacher is real. Number one, John said you can tell whether or not they're real by their commitment to the believers. Their commitment to the body of believers. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 19, John says they went out from us. But they were not of us. For had they been of us, they would have no doubt continued with us. But they went out that they might that it that they might manifest, or that they might be manifest, that they were not all of us. The true Christian stands with the Christians all the time. Even when the fire gets hot, the true Christian will stand with the body, with the believers in season and out of season. When it's convenient and when it is not. When it is popular and when it is not. The, the Christians who are wish-washy with the Christians sometimes and not with us at other times. We can't really count on you. You're all over the place. It's not real. The true believer comes down on the, on the side of the written word of God every time. Every time. The true believer endorses what the Bible endorses. Praise the Lord. Every time. And the true believer, hallelujah, even when the believer finds him or herself having fallen beneath the standard, they still never attack the standard. Paul says, even when I fall beneath the law, I must give consent that the law is good. And it is holy. And it is perfect. Even when I miss the mark. My position is not that the mark should not be there. Leave the mark where it is. See if you erase the mark. I have no chance of, of reaching the mark. If you take away better. I can never get better. Praise the Lord. But if you leave God's standard where it is. Even when I'm down, at least I know where I got to get to. Good God Almighty. Somebody shout amen. Those of us who believe the Bible, we don't believe the Bible because we're able to live up to its standards 24-7. The Bible teaches that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But at least we know how and where. We got to go. Oh my. In studying this book, oh, sometimes the, the Bible itself makes me shouting glad when I read where I've gotten it right. <laughs> then it makes me fighting mad when I read where I've gotten it wrong. But you know what I've learned? I've learned not to argue with it. I've learned not to question it. I don't say, well, who wrote this? Well, this is just the Bible. Who wrote the Bible? Man wrote the Bible. Oh, no, no. The Bible is the word of God. The Bible is God's word. Oh my, I may teach, I may preach one sermon. I may revisit that sermon again. I may preach uh, the Bible. So I, might, I might need to preach it again, tell you how it was compiled and how God watched over his word and how all of these authors who, uh, who never met each other, never lived in the same region, never talked to each other, and yet all the books connect. They all flow freely. It's amazing how the God of the Bible watched over his word and protected his word and, 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 and compiled this great book. Somebody said, well, what about the lost books of the Bible? There are no lost books. There are no lost books. There were books that were not um, uh, entered because they could not pass the test of canonicity. But there are no lost books. The Bible is complete. The Bible rejoices the heart. The Bible uh, makes the uh, give wisdom to the simple. 
good God Almighty. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible is the greatest document in existence. And it is our book of morals. It is the book for which we, we, we learn to walk and learn to live. And, 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 and uh, the body of Christ is supposed to stick together. So those Christians who are all over the place, which is becoming popular now, to be a Christian all over the place. Christians show up in places now where Christians didn't show up before. We see Christians doing things now that in times past Christians wouldn't consider doing because we wanted to represent the cross and Jesus Christ. We see churches now where churches are taking their crosses down. The churches don't look like churches. Churches look like nightclubs. The, 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 it's black in there. It's dark. A dark church. A black dark. A dark church. Taking the cross out and, and fake uh, smoke. And disco lights, service in this red, green, flash. I, look, I'm glad. I don't want to be reminded of what the Lord brought me out of. Because the Bible says, uh, had they been mindful of what they came out of, they would have gone back to it. It's best to keep that where it, where it was. Or uh, where it is in the past. I'm in Christ now. Praise the Lord. I'm in Christ now. And uh, we got to light it up, so, first of all, so you can see your pages on Scripture. And we don't want you to think you went to a club today. Everybody knows where you are. In the house of God. The believers, so when they forsake the church, that's a sign that they're not real. Let me move fast, fast, because some of you look at me like you don't like my preaching today. Another thing to consider is lifestyle. John chapter 3, amen. And verse 23 through 24 says, And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. That is, the man that keeps the word of God, that lives the word of God, Jesus lives in that man, and that man lives in Jesus. Praise the Lord. He says, and hereby know we that he abideth in us by the Spirit which dwelleth in us. Here's how we know that we're in Christ. By his spirit that dwells in him, in us. And it is manifested uh, by the way we obey the word. Saints, as never before, we got to obey God. We cannot de-emphasize the importance of obedience. I thought I'd get a big amen there. As we can't de-emphasize uh, the importance of letting the world see Christ in us. And, we, and I am not apologizing for loving the Lord. And we can't love with the world's definition of love. The world's definition of love is, the world will make you think that love is a license. That if you love a person, they should be able to do anything they want to any, with anyone and you just love them and you support them and no matter what they do. That is a modern, ungodly definition of love. Love in times past, oh yeah, love supported, but love also corrected. The Bible says, whom the Father loveth, he chastens. Is that right? Is that what Hebrew says? Amen. The Bible says, if God deals with you like you are legitimate, he will chasten you. The Bible says, now if you be without chastisement, then you are illegitimate. King James says, you are bastards and not sons. So when you are legitimately in Christ, Christ will bring correction. The most loving thing that a parent can do for a child is not to give them a cake at their birthday, on their birthday. It is to correct that child when that child is wrong. Praise the Lord. Correcting is loving. Now you want to give them a cake. I'm not teaching against cake, but you, you see my point. Uh, correction is a greater manifestation of love than, than giving them, filling them up with sugar. Love, correcting. If I was going the wrong way, uh, I wouldn't want you to just lovingly wave at me. 
bless you. I'm going the wrong way. No, no, get my attention. Get my attention. Please get my attention. Get my, do what you have to do. Get my attention. Throw a rock at me. Get my attention. I remember one time when I first moved to Raleigh. In Rockingham, we didn't have many one-way streets. I was just moved to Raleigh, and I'm going down the street. And, man, everybody just waving. I said, wow. I mean, I just, I just, I just got here, and I'm that popular? <laughs> it just... Turns out, I looked down there and saw all that traffic coming my way. I said, oh, my Lord, I'm on a run. I'm going down the wrong way and, and, and a one-way street. And I turned around fast. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> but I, I'm really glad. I'm, thank you, uh, uh, Raleighians or Raleighites or whatever. Thank you for getting my attention while I was going uh, south. In a one-way street that was northbound. I could not be here today. Correction. Lastly, nothing speaks to the truth and the authenticity of a, of a, of a preacher like their fruit. John chapter 4 and verse 6 is a part of, our, uh, part of our text. We are of God. He that knoweth, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that knoweth not God. Heareth not us. Oh, that is the truth. When people love God, they will hear people who preach the word of God. When people do not love God, they resent the truth preacher. Some of you now, you're struggling. You're struggling with me just telling you the truth. Truth without political correctness. Truth without apology. You can't fault me. You, you can't argue. You can't make the case that anything that I've said thus far is either scripturally incorrect or lines up with common sense. Because you know a man can't make himself into a woman. Just can't do it. And uh, ju you just can't do it. Praise the Lord. And, and the Bible is right. Now, your problem with me it's really not with me. According to this, your problem with me is your problem with God. For when you are right with God, you will hear the word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Am I right? When your heart is right with God, the speaker may not be appealing to look at. You may not like the sound of their voice. You may not like their style of preaching. Everything about them, it may sound like the screeching on a, on a black bull when they speak. Oh, God, I don't like the sound of their voice. But if they're telling the truth, truth prevails over all that stuff. And something in you has to say amen to the truth of God. For the Bible, my friends, is right. So now, let's look for just a few more minutes. I'm watching the clock. Hallelujah. At what happens. The most important thing is what they say about Christ. I told you Thursday night to underline he, that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Verse 2 says, hereby know we the spirit of God. That is, here's how we know whether or not the speaker is operating under the power of the Holy Ghost. Every spirit, spirit here, just as spirit in verse 1, spirit in verse 2 is doctrine. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. That is, several things here. Number one, uh, do they teach? That Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man at the same time. Do they teach that Jesus Christ was 100% God and 100% man? Hallelujah. Isn't that something to think about? That's why Jesus is the only God man. It's not, it's not proper to refer to any preacher as a God man. You give us a compliment when you call us a man of God. But you can't call any human being a God-man. God-man is a theological term. The only God-man who ever existed 
was Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. The Bible speaks of Christ. It says, in him dwell the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All of God dwell in Jesus Christ. It was God. The Bible says that his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Jesus came to town, God came to town. Isn't that amazing? Who is Jesus? Praise the Lord. That's what I want to know from all these teachers out here. I want to know, Mr. Psychologist, secular psychologist, who is Jesus? In your psychology and in your psychiatry. Muslim, what role does Jesus play? Buddhist, who's Jesus? Who is Jesus? Yeah, Oprah, who is Jesus? And Oprahism. Chopra, who is Jesus? With all of these doctrines, I want to know who Jesus is because based on what you tell me about Jesus, that lets me know whether or not I need to hear anything else. You have to say. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. It's, this is how you recognize whether or not they're operating under the spirit of God. See, some deny that Christ had ever come in the flesh. There were those who believe that the, um, the Messiah, Christ, Messiah, the anointed one, during Jesus Christ's earthly ministry, they believe that that, that Jesus was not the Christ of God. Right. See, Christ is not a last name. Christ is a designation, a title. Jesus Christ. Jesus, the anointed one. Jesus Christ is Jesus, the Messiah. Not last name. Patrick Wooden. Wooden, not Wooden. Wooden is my last name. But Christ was not Jesus' last name. Christ is who Jesus is. For if Jesus was not the Christ, there would have been no power in the name of Jesus. What puts the power in the name of Jesus is that Jesus is the Christ. Good God Almighty. He's the Christ of God. The Messiah, somebody shout something, uh, if you will. Some, some even uh, uh, believe that that was something, uh, that, that the divine Christ and Jesus of Nazareth were different beings. That's not true. Now, the Serenthian Gnostics taught that Jesus did not become the Christ until he was baptized of John the Baptist. And then they taught that when Jesus went to the cross to die, that divinity departed from Jesus. So Jesus, the man, died. Just as Jesus, the man, was born. But that Jesus did not become the Christ until he was baptized by John the Baptist. They were wrong. They could not have been more wrong. For Matthew tells us something about who Jesus is. Uh, is and who Jesus was when he was born. Bible says in Matthew's gospel, chapter 1 and verse 18, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. He was Christ when he was born. Uh, when his mother uh, Mary was engaged to Joseph before they came together. She was found of a child of the Holy Ghost. Jesus, this is the birth. This is how Jesus Christ was born. Luke's gospel, chapter two. Do you feel the Holy Ghost? I know why you feel the Holy Ghost. See, this is a holiness church, and you call the name Jesus too many times. 
in, in, in holiness, uh, something starts to move. Mm -hmm. I heard Luke say, in Luke 2 and 11 says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. He was the Savior and the Lord and Christ when he was born. He didn't get baptized by John till 30 years later when he started his earthly ministry. So he was Christ from day one. Can I get a witness? God came, came down and died for us. Now, who died is the question on the cross. Was it the divine Christ or was it just a man? Well, Paul addresses this in Romans 5 and uh, verse 8. He says, God commendeth, God displayed his love for us, his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. No, 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 not just Jesus, but Christ. Not just a man, but God died for us. Can I get a witness? Mm, if you look with me for a minute here, and we're getting ready to move on. First Corinthians chapter 15. Ah, uh, and we look at verse 3 says, For I deliver unto you first uh, of all. Thank you, Jesus. I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also receive, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture, and that he, Christ, was buried, and that he, Christ, rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. So Jesus was the Christ when he was born and Jesus was the Christ when he died hallelujah Jesus isn't that amazing to think that God would die for us not only was Jesus the Christ when he was born and not only was Jesus the Christ when he died but Jesus was the Christ before he came. For I heard Paul saying, Philippians 2 and 5, let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Good God Almighty, who being in the form of God, who being the way he was before he ever came to this planet, this is the pre-existence of Christ. Before he ever came to the earth, before the Holy Ghost deposited him in Mary's womb, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. That is, he didn't think that equality with the Father was something that he had to forcibly take because it was something that he already had. Jesus, but well, what did he do? He made himself of no reputation and took upon the form of a servant and was made, praise the Lord, in the likeness of men and being found in the fashion of a man. Look what he did. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death. You know, death couldn't kill him if he didn't want to die. Do you not know that throughout his entire earthly ministry, nobody ever died in his presence? And one day there was a lady, and she was on her way to bury her son. And Jesus, she didn't see Jesus, but Jesus saw her. She was in that she was a woman from Nin, and she was on her way to bury her son. And she was crying, and I preached about it years ago. A message entitled, When Life and Death 
met together in the middle of the road. Mm, Jesus saw that lady and saw her tears and walked up to her and said, don't cry. And touched the bar, touched the casket where the body was. And her son came back to life. Good God Almighty, when Jesus got up, over 500 brethren of the bodies of those that slept was raised from the dead also. You remember at the tomb of Lazarus. Lazarus had been dead for three days. Jesus said, show me why you buried him. Walked out there to Lazarus's tomb and Jesus said, Lazarus, get up. Good. And I'm just like the preacher who said it's a good thing that Jesus called Lazarus' name. For had Jesus said simply get up, everybody dead would have got up from the grave because our Lord has power over death. Yeah! Yeah! Somebody lift your hands and praise Jesus Christ. You know, I'd feel better. I'd feel better if I could get, could get just a few hundred of you just to begin to shout, he's real. Just keep on saying it. He's real. I'm real. I'm real. I'm real. Oh, Lord. I'm gonna get back to it, but uh, there are some things I may not know. And there are some places that I can't go. I know it is. But this one thing, oh, I know my God is real. For I can feel. Praise God in this place today. Woo. Somebody better come and get me. But when I start talking about Jesus and how good he is and the power he has. Thank you for watching God First with Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. and the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. To experience this message in its entirety, call 877-463-3477 to purchase a DVD or CD. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God First day. God First.